Today, I'm going to show you how I made this juicy jalapeno cheese venison sausage. My name is Greg. Welcome to the Gourmet Woodsman. If you've seen any of my sausage videos, you know that I always grind up my own meat. I like to make sure it's nice and cold, do everything I can to avoid fat smear. But today, I'm using some already ground meat. A friend of mine gave me some venison that was already ground. I'm just defrosting it now. And I've got a little bit of already ground pork from the last pig that I had at the processor, which was quite a while ago. So just trying to clean out the freezer and I'll be using this. It might be a little bit leaner of a sausage than normal. This jalapeno cheese sausage is gonna use kosher salt. It's going to use cure number one because I will be smoking them at a low temperature. It will be using black pepper, which I will be grinding up. I will be using granulated garlic. Use garlic powder if you don't have granulated garlic. I'll be using onion powder. Yeah, I know, it says chopped onion. I'm gonna grind it with my black pepper and with my mustard seeds. I'll be grinding half of them and leaving half of them whole. Recipe will be in the description. I'll be using marjoram leaves. I'll be using some thyme leaves. It's gonna take just a little bit of paprika and even less sugar. Some high heat and on fat dry milk. I've got my jalapeno seeded, diced, and frozen. And I've got, well, I've got shredded cheese because in the name of making sausage, I have this left over from a recent camping trip. Otherwise, I'd be using a high temp cheddar or even a regular cheddar cut into cubes and frozen. If you don't want to use curing salts, sodium nitrite, you have some options. You could make this as a fresh sausage and just cook it when you're ready to eat it. You could cook it in a way that does not break the 40-144 rule, like poaching it or cooking it in your oven at, you know, maybe around 200. 40-144 rule says proteins in between those temperatures can't be there for more than four hours. And the reason why is it's just the party zone for bacteria. They just multiply very quickly at those temperatures. There are some exceptions to the 4144 rule, but sausage is not one of them. If you decide to finish your sausage without the curing salt, just replace it with 0.25% more kosher salt. All right, well, the venison's about 34 degrees. Pork is a little warmer, like 36 degrees. 35 or below is ideal. So I'm gonna say the average between the pork and the venison, pretty close to 35. Pork's all smeared already anyway, because didn't grind this myself. But cleaning out the very last of the pork from the processor, and I think it's still gonna make a delicious sausage, you know? So I'm just gonna mix these two together a little bit before I add my, uh, before I mix my spices. Now I'm gonna add in my spices and the binder and the salts, of course. Gonna add in some of my water, not all of it yet, and I'm gonna mix. Starting to come together, starting to lift the bowl a little, starting to be a little sticky. I'm gonna add the rest of my water. I'm gonna add my jalapenos. These have been in the freezer, so they're kind of stuck together. There we go. Well, they'll at least be studded with jalapenos. If I wasn't going by the rule of sausage, trying to of using what I have, I would definitely be using some high temperature cheddar or just some regular cheddar cubed up and frozen. I don't know how much these shredded bits of cheese are really going to uh, stud the sausage when it's said and done, but I suppose we'll find out. It'll still be cheesy and good, I'm sure of that. All right, see all the strands really reaching out. See that? It's just a little spurry. Just lifting up my bowl, sticking to my hands. That is donezo. Ready for the stuffer. I think I'm using 30, 32 hog casings here. But to tell you the truth, these are ones that I resalted and restocked, and I may have mislabeled them because it seems a little big. But anyway, I'm going to fill it up with some water, slipping around the horn which I'm gonna lube up nicely with water and slip it on and we'll see. I'm kind of thinking these are a big 40-42, but in which case I have to be very careful using this small horn. The thing is, I don't think those were this long. Remember the 30-32s were like the longest casings I've ever seen. I mean, like this one casing is taking up most of the horn here. But we'll find out real shortly. I'll pull a little bit off, tie a knot, poke a hole or two or three. And we're just filling. No, these are 30-32s. 40-42s are much fatter. They're like the kielbasa size. This is 
Not kielbasa, sorry. It's left over, I will just re-salt. Come down one, pinch. Come down in the next, skip one, pinch, and just go away. Come down one and pinch. Skip to the next one and pinch, and just twist it away. This way, I'm always going one direction, and it's easier for me. Come down one and pinch. Skip to the next one and pinch. Twist that away. Or you can go one towards you, and just do the next one away from you, and then the next one towards you. Either way, comes out the same results. Anyway, just gonna pinch punch holes in here, especially if I see an air pocket. Flop the sausage over and poke holes on that side too. And if you don't have one of these, you could just use a pan. Just gonna put these on a rack. I'll probably find a couple of mason jar lids or something just to keep this up off that tray and uh, put that on into the fridge. If you made your sausages as a fresh sausage and did not use curing salt, you could cook them up right now. Although if you stick them in front of a fan for a half hour to an hour, it dries them out pretty nice and then you should be able to get a pretty good snap also. These jalapeno venison sausages have been in the refrigerator overnight. Took them out of the refrigerator about an hour ago and I'm about to go put them onto the smoker. So I'm using this master built smoker that my neighbor was kind enough to loan me while I await my smoker to finish being built by my son. Anyway, I've got this set for 100 degrees. You can see I have the door cracked a little bit. And I have not added chips. I'm going to leave them in there for an hour like this to dry off those casings before I start adding smoke. So after an hour, I closed this up, set it, turned up the temps to 125 and added some chips. It's been another hour, so I guess I'm going to change this to uh, what the hell's going on. Interesting. It's not doing that when I look at it. It's only doing that through the camera. Anyway, I'm going to turn it up to 135. All right, these reached an internal of 145, and I'm going into a cold water bath. I'm going to leave them there like about 10 minutes. Stop their cooking. Just going to hang these up for a few hours to bloom. They'll dry out, deepen their color a little, and we'll taste them. Well, let's see what it's all about. Not a bad texture at all. It's juicy. Casings bound. Nothing wrong with that sausage at all. Hmm. It's even got a snap. Okay. The jalapeno is kind of mild. I could use more. And well, using up that used cheese, I knew I wasn't going to get a studded cheese effect. But... Mm. That's a nice juicy sausage. Nothing wrong with that at all. Great sausage. Definitely use cubes of high temp cheddar or just regular cheddar frozen. You get that studded cheese effect. That would be nice. It's following some of the origins of sausage. Needed to use some things up and I used them up and hey, that's a pretty good sausage. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Put some love into your food. Peace.